sure no one had any recent things they made up. What about that border crossing recently? No? Nobody? Okay. So I'm Powder Matt, and like you, I'm a ski bum at heart. And I want to share some thoughts from a recent journey, a ski bum road trip I took up into northern British Columbia. And for you that may not know enough about no British Columbia, northern BC has an amazing native heritage, and for the Americans, Indian heritage. The raven plays a coveted role for many of these First Nations people. And while I was on the ski bum journey, took me into some wild places, I watched a, a boy, and this boy was way up in northern BC, way up in northern BC where the big mountains meet the coast and the rivers flow wild with energy and life filled with salmon. And that boy, he walked this trail through a snow-filled path through the forest out to an open meadow to a small forest road to meet his school bus every day. And every day, the same thing happened. A raven came out of the tallest trees from the mountain tops and descended down onto that boy right above him and followed him through the forest path, through that meadow, and out to where the school bus met him. Squawking, flapping its wings, sharing something, flying around the boy at eye level, down around his feet, you know how they stomp around and back up. You know that boy? He did the same thing every day. He threw rocks at it, stomped towards it, and yelled at it. Go away. Get out of here, you dumb bird. You see, that boy was never shared the story of the power and the importance of the raven to his people. And to his people, and many other BC First Nations, the raven was the prankster, the entertainer, the storyteller, the eyes. They watched over the place, the essence and soul of the land. In times past, the people listened. They learned and enjoyed what the raven had to say and what the raven shared. What is our raven? Well, near and deep to me, near and dear to me, it's ski bums and good times. Why? Because these characters and their antics provided the authenticity of all of our resort and ski town communities. Without them, many of our ski towns and resort communities would provide a sterile and manufactured experience. These people and, our, and the natural landscape we have around us is what makes our sport different. And the ski bums, to me, stand for local, unique, good times, community. So let's step back in time and see where these ski bums got their start. In North America, skiing had its roots deeply embedded in good times. After World War II, skiing became playful, but the sport really hit growth when news coverage of movie stars and the wealthy escaping 
to places like Sun Valley and Aspen for good times. Wealthy and the stars, they shared slope time and good times with common folk, you know, common folk, known as ski bums, locals who shared their passion. And what Jay Mo said earlier, provided those people that needed escape. And into the 80s and 90s, ski bums now becoming known in some circles as dirt bags. They carried on living life, adventure, and good times. They are celebrated characters in many of your town. If you don't know them by name, you may have met them on the streets sometime. And they had names like Rad Jack, Bobby Burns, Pete the Painter, Gundog, you name it. And they lived in communities from Whitefish to Taos to Telluride to Mad River Glen to Mammoth, all the way up to Smithers to Golden to Fernie. Every legitimate mountain town had their characters. They championed good times, good runs, first up the lift, last down, last to bed, if many of them slept at all. Stories share abound about them in opera and happy hour in every mountain community. They fostered a new way of life, sharing it with their sunnier friends, the surfers. Life is good, no bad days. Celebrate often and regularly. Good times rule, don't settle. Pitch in, lend a hand. Some of these early day ski bums became ski industry pioneers right here in our backyard. In 1967, a skier named Charlie Locke loaded his backpack with a bunch of other dirt bags. And they ski toured from Lake Louise all the way to Jasper before the highway. It took them 21 days through blinding snowstorms, up treacherously steep headwalls, from mountaintops to valley bottoms, and back at it again. The Great Divide Ski Traverse is one of the truly great ski adventures in the world. Unlike others like Europe's Haute Route, it is still uncrowded and pure. Charlie Locke is a true mountain pioneer and an incredible story. Sharing good times in the mountains beat anything you could ever do in the city, he once shared with me. And he bought Lake Louise ski area. Charlie Locke, Lizzie Rummel, Don Vakaroff, Rudy Gerch, Hans Moser, Nancy Greenrain, Mike Wigley, and more. These are the real trailblazers who have long functioned as the founding figures for the Canadian ski industry and mountain sports in Canada. They challenged assumptions and took risks. Our challenge is to keep that going and embody the spirit of their legacy. Why does this matter? Well, as the world speeds up, we need to cherish laid back and chill. As things pull at you to get bigger, ah, let's celebrate quaint, quirky, tantalizing, character. And as everyone gets pushed for more, be grateful for what we have, the incredible places we live in, the natural beauty, the amazing people in these mountain towns. It is our heritage, and the ski bums are the soul of our mountains. What stories, tales, and traditions and legacies come from. The, this real life is the only way to get through the digital clutter that bombards each of us every day. I have a challenge for each of you, because you guys are all good times ambassadors of the mountain lifestyle. Pull out your device if you don't have it already. I don't, I've left mine over there, but Kelly's uh, going to take care of it. We're going to do a quick tweet, because I would believe in sharing this goodness. It is powerful. We need to share it. Okay? 
So I would do a crowd selfie of me, just kind of imagine I had my phone right here, and I would say, loving my time with ski bums at Mountain Travel, hashtag Mountain Travel, hashtag good times. Okay, you guys? Please do that. We need to share our good times and the good times we have together in the mountains. Thousands of candles can be lighted from a single candle, and the life of that candle will not diminish. Happiness, you know, happiness never decreases by being shared, you guys. You play a vital role in the fight for our soul, a fight not to let our good times go the way of the raven. You have work to do. We have a hill to climb. Some of our resort companies now have leadership focused solely on ROI. Sure, this matters, but in addition to that, some of the management teams don't want to change, grow, or be inspired to make a difference in their community. Some of these team members have never led a ski bum life, never lived in a ski town, never immersed themselves in a community, don't understand even, frankly, what good times are. And in addition to that, some of these leaders are working from the playbook, it's all okay. Well, we can't succeed on okay. Okay is mediocrity. Okay is settling. Okay is bland. So, as Bruce said, and Bruce, thank you very much for allowing me this opportunity. And Michael, thank you very much. To grow, we need to champion these stories. We need to celebrate the good times, and we need to share our tradition. The world today can use more freedom, goodness, and smiles that come from our sport. It's green trees, blue skies, and white snow at every ski area. So the question I have is, what differentiates one resort from the next? The legacy of our industry, as we talked about, is to take risks, to challenge the status quo. The key to differentiation is to celebrate, share, cherish your own unique and special stories of good times in your community. Planting the seed for others to join in our tradition and become part of us. Imagine what the world would be like if more people can share good times in the mountains. Thank you. <laughs>